Kimberly Rice, and you are tuned into the Secret Sauce Marketing Tasting Show, the groundbreaking podcast for business bosses, professional women, and anyone who is hungry to learn how to create the career, business, and life of their dreams by charting their own course. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Secret Sauce Marketing Tastings podcast. This is Kimberly Rice, President and Chief Strategist of KLA Marketing Associates, coming to you live this Sunday afternoon. We're so glad that you've um, decided to join us uh, for episode six to define and build your personal brand. You know, that, that is a real buzzword these days, personal brand. And so many folks that I um, am speaking to and in front of really do not understand what that means, a personal brand. What is it? So I, I love to use the quote of one of our favorite um, billionaires here on the West Coast. Uh, I'm not on the West Coast, but I'll use it here. And that's Jeff Bezos, who likes to define the personal brand as a what people say about you when you are not in the room. So it's different from a reputation, which can be built and destroyed, as opposed to a personal brand. So I like to think of it as a a couple of buzzwords, how people know you if they're not calling you by your proper name. So one of the things that we think of is, you know, in building a personal brand, it's taking action steps to develop how people want to speak to you or speak about you as the go-to person for your area of practice or a segment of your area of practice. For example, I just think of um, if you're a, say, a a commercial real estate attorney and your area of of practice is in construction finance. Um, And so for those folks who may have the need to retain you for your services in that area, construction finance, you know, would that be um, developers, investors, uh, maybe brokers uh, of big corporate projects, um, even municipal projects. Um, And so for you to develop the personal brand of the go-to person for anyone who needs construction finance um, support or services, Um, you know, from a legal services perspective, um, there's a number of steps that you can take to make that happen. Um, First and foremost, um, really basic step is that wherever your name appears, so let's just think for a moment um, on your law firm letterhead, your business card, your law firm website profile, um, if you have a blog, on any associations that you belong to, um, your LinkedIn profile, any of your social media and digital assets. Um, You wanna make sure that you have maybe a personal tagline. You know, the the gentleman's or the ladies um, go-to for construction finance or your businesses go-to for construction finance legal matters. Um, something that's going to attach your name with the keywords of your area of focus and wherein you would like to attract clients. So one of the things that, you know, when I we work with clients, we often give them a question, um, a, a few questions to respond to, to kind of help them think outside of their box of defining and building Um, a personal brand. So I'll just throw these out here. And this is actually, you can find some of these in my book, uh, which I published last fall, The Rainmaker Roadmap, a step-by-step guide to building a prosperous business available on Amazon. So think for a moment, how do you describe yourself to others professionally and personally? And I'll use a caveat for goodness sake, please don't start your introduction by saying that you're an attorney or you're a doctor or you're an engineer because for the layperson, they may have their own perception of what that means, 
but it usually isn't going to be on target for what it is that you do every day. You know, so in the medical sense, if you say that you're a doctor or a, or a MD or a, a DO, um, people have a visual connotation of what that is. You may be a cardiatric radiologist and they may be thinking um, pedometrist. Um, and so it really is not a good way to start a conversation. Second question, how do I think clients, prospects and referral sources perceive me you know what are other people saying about you when they when they speak your name you know I've been in legal marketing for over 27 years and so when people hear my name Kimberly Rice I hope by now people think legal marketing she works with law firms she works with lawyers she works with other professionals um, and the, th the third question I'll ask is um, how do you want clients, future clients and referral sources to remember you? What do you want them to say? You know, so in order to respond to those questions, you know, we have to ask ourselves, you know, how are you communicating what it is that you want to be known for as the go-to professional? You know, when you describe yourself, when you introduce yourself to other people, that comes with that 30-second message. Um, when other people are introducing you, um, this developing and defining your personal brand um, is a series of steps over a period of time. You know, it's difficult to in, um, ingrain in other people's memories uh, what it is that you want them to remember about you. But good news, there's no better time than today, right now, to do that. As soon as this podcast is over, you can hop on all your digital assets, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever it is, Instagram, and you can write a catchy phrase, you know, John Smith, uh, construction, finance, lawyer to the stars. Hmm. You can you bring a little levity to it. So, you know, some of the ways that you can do this is you can break down your primary services. Uh, the services that you provide. Um, identify your core values. What is it that you find meaningful as a professional service provider um, in the services that you provide? You know, you can, if you take some time to identify your passions, what do you love most about your work? What do you love most outside of your advocation? You know, what we are most passionate about our eyes light up, you know, we speak a little bit more quickly when we speak about what we're passionate about. It may be helping others to, you know, create wonderful, meaningful architecture, um, buildings to, to, for service to others. I mean, you know, think about what it is that you do and how that helps others. You know, um, from your list of gifts and talents, what do you think that you do better than most people? Think about that. There's something very unique about you. What would you say that it is? You may want to percolate over that for some time. Ask some of the closest people in your life, your spouse, your parents, your siblings, your best friend, etc. Get other people's perceptions of you. What do you think are the skills that other people regularly notice in you? So based on all of that, you can draft a statement that weaves these items from the list that we were just speaking of into a statement of your areas of focus. So when you draft a, a, a statement, a couple of sentences highlighting your value proposition, and say your top five key gifts that should integrate your most valuable passion and skills. And whatever that paragraph ends up being, that is your personal brand. So there is no right or wrong, and it, can, it will certainly evolve over time. You're going to add to it as you practice, as you gain life experience, as you gain corporate experience, as you gain you know, professional experience. Um, so here's a few characteristics that I would say that you want to include in a solid personal brand. Above all, and most importantly, 
is that it must communicate clarity. Clarity. You must be clear about who you are, what you stand for, and what you offer clients. Why you do what you do. You must communicate verbally and visually in a clear, easy to understand manner. Our world has never been more visual than it is today. So one of the things that we know is that more pictures, less words. Your personal brand statement must be authentic. You know, how congruent and aligned are you with the real you? You can fake some of the people some of the time, but you certainly can't fake some of the people all the time. In the, our hyped up, cluttered world, people can smell a fake from miles away. When your brand message is clear, authentic, and aligned with your values, and you walk your talk, you'll attract a following of the people with which you are meant to work. So you think about that. Another of the essentials of a solid brand is remarkability. What is the tone and intention of your brand? Can someone see and feel your brand personality within seconds of engaging with you? you now, it's certainly okay to stop out a step outside of the box because that really illuminates your uniqueness and point of difference that sets you apart. That is the whole point. You want to be set apart. You don't want to be like everyone else. We live in an extraordinarily competitive professional landscape. So you want to be outside of the herd and be uniquely you. Another core essential to a solid brand is the energy with which you live that brand. It's a breathing, living organism. With every interaction, your clients will notice subtle energy clues. If you're not passionate about what you're doing or if you're doing it for all the wrong reasons, your lifeless brand will sputter along, wheezing, gasping for air. On the other hand, if you infuse your brand with passion and energy, your brand will become irresistible. So one of the things that we know and we read so much about is, you know, aligning our personal brand with an emotional connection. So when you do what you do and you're passionate about that, you know, um, the, um, the emotions that you emote make your brain sit up and pay attention. You know, it's like when you do what you do best, how do you make other people feel? Um, and this is one of my most favorite quotes of all times from the great, late Dr. Maya Angelou. People will forget what you say and they will forget what you may do, but they will absolutely remember how you make them feel. So think of that. That is at the core of an influ influential personal brand. In order to resonate strongly with your target audience, you must make an emotional connection. When you think about the most powerful question that you could ask yourself, how do I want people to feel when they experience my brand? And I've learned over many, many years that when I have an encounter with a client or anyone, anyone um, speaking to a broad audience, a small audience, training other people, when I want to walk, when I walk away from what I've done for them, I want them to have a very positive feeling, being uplifted, inspired, empowered. <coughs> Excuse me. Another core essential of a personal brand is consistency. I see it all the time. Service providers putting the cart before the horse, marketing to everyone and anyone before developing a solid brand foundation. In order to be consistent with your brand message and your marketing, you first must create your brand platform. <clears throat> this takes time to identify your brand attributes and your target market, develop your compelling message, and create your unique offerings of value. Once you have that clear foundation, then you're ready to implement consistency across all your marketing channels from your website and blog to workshops, speaking engagements, social media platforms, in real life, you know, in in-person interactions, 
with clients, with referrals across the board. So another question that we often ask our clients is how is your personal brand um, socially engaging? Does it spark conversations? Um, a powerful, authentic brand is an act of social engagement. You are making the conversation happen. You are participating, connecting, collaborating. One of the things that I see that folks have difficulty in developing and defining their personal brand is they've yet to declare their niche, almost like being in college. You know, you, you, have, you can't be everything to everybody. Um, and you certainly can practice one more than one service, but you have to lead with something. So you can be, become known for that one something. Doesn't mean that you won't accept other engagements. I think people get really off track on that. Um, and so we, we work with them to kind of peel back the layers and understand, you know, genuinely what they have an interest in in um, developing that personal brand, personal brand around. Um, so this is part of the reputation enhancing um, component of building a prosperous business. Um, certainly in the new normal of the 21st century, there are numerous ways to get your name out there, including online, which is where so many people gather and encourage one another. But studies show us clearly that across all socioeconomic and professional categories, prospective purchasers of legal services are searching for counsel online. So you want to show up there in a big way. So I hope that's given you something to think about, how to define and build your personal brand. Um, there are so many folks competing for the same clients as you are. Um, do not be fooled. Do not be lulled into complacency. Um, I invite you to consider these points that we've talked about. You know, certainly reach out. We're more than happy to help wor work you through any of this. Uh, we have tons of resources. We would be happy for you to give us a call and schedule a complimentary half-hour consult to get you started, get you on the right track. Uh, we certainly appreciate you joining in and listening today as we speak about how to define and build your personal brand here on the Secret Sauce Marketing Tastings podcast. And we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day.